Hello everybody! Watch this video to see how to recover data from a RAID array if Fujitsu D3116 controller breaks down. You will learn what to do if a RAID is built with SAS drives, how to connect them to an ordinary PC, and how to recover data from an SAS drive. SAS, which stands for Serial Attached SCSI, is a technology that provides high performance and reliability for data storage services. In addition to that, servers often use the RAID technology, which further improves the reliability of data storage. RAID systems are widely used to ensure safety and reliability when it comes to storing large amounts of information. However, as is the case with any other equipment, we cannot exclude situations when a RAID controller may break down and you lose access to important files. Today, we'll explore a few methods to help you recover data from a RAID system if your Fujitsu D3116 controller fails. We'll tell you how to transfer your disks to another controller and how to use specialized data recovery software to get your RAID data back. These methods will help you restore access to your files and minimize possible data loss. First of all, you should realize that data recovery from RAID is a complicated process that requires certain knowledge and skills. Before you begin the recovery process, we strongly recommend reading the technical documents and manuals provided by the controller's manufacturer. If it seems too difficult for you, you'd better contact professionals since any careless actions can make the task even more complicated. For better understanding of how the RAID technology works, let's explore the process of creating a disk array system on this specific device. To create a RAID on a Fujitsu controller, you need to enter the BIOS, and you can do it by pressing Ctrl H shortcut while the computer is booting. If you have several controllers installed, select the one you want to use and click Start to continue. Open the configuration wizard. In the wizard window, choose New Configuration and click Next. You will see a warning that the current configuration will be cleared and all data will be lost. Click Yes to continue. Now choose the RAID configuration method – Manual or Automatic – and click Next. Select the disks that the future RAID will consist of and click Add to Array. As a result, they will be added to a virtual group. Click Accept DG to confirm it, and then Next. Now add this group to Span, click Add to Span, and Next. At this stage, you should choose RAID level, strip size, configure read and write policies, cache, etc. When you're done with all properties, click Update Size and Accept. and then Next. Accept and Yes to save the configuration. After that, click Yes one more time to start disk initialization. This will run fast initialization, but if you need to wipe the drives completely, select Slow Initialize and click Go. Now the RAID system is ready, and the last step is to restart the computer. After that, you'll be able to partition the volume and add some data. If you lost access to the disk array because of controller breakdown, there are a few ways of retrieving your data. The first recovery method, if your Fujitsu D3116 controller failed, is to transfer the disks to another controller, which is still healthy. For this method, you will need one more controller of the same model or a compatible one. If you're not sure you can do it on your own, consult professionals. Make sure that this operation is safe for your data. Otherwise, wrong actions may erase the disk completely along with your precious files. Follow the link below to visit our channel I watched a detailed tutorial about transferring hard disks to a new controller. The second method to recover data involves specialized data recovery software which can work with RAID systems. There are various software tools to help you recover data from a damaged RAID system. One of them is Hetman RAID Recovery. This utility supports all popular RAID types, missed file systems, and various array patterns used by various RAID controllers. For data recovery, you'll need to connect all the hard disks to the motherboard of a Windows computer, because this utility is only compatible with this operating system so far. On the other hand, you can use it to recover data from file systems used by other operating systems as well. If you used SAS drives to build a RAID, just like I did, you won't be able to connect them directly to the motherboard. 
For this specific case, you need a controller that supports direct connection without using RAID. For example, you can use an HBA controller. So disconnect the disks from the dead controller, connect an HBA controller to the motherboard of your Windows computer and connect the disks to that HBA controller. If you notice that the program doesn't show all connected disks, open the Disk Management app and check if the operating system has identified every disk. If only some of them are displayed, you'll have to connect them one by one, create their images and then recover data from such images. For this purpose, do the following. Start Hetman RAID Recovery, open the Tools menu, Save Disk. Alternatively, right-click on the disks and choose Save Disk. Remember to check the option to save the image of an entire disk. Click Next. Choose where to save the image file, Hard Disk, and give the pause. It can even be a shared folder on your network. Then click Save. One important thing is to make sure that you have enough space on your hard disk to save a disk image, so keep that in mind before you begin. After you have saved images of every disk, open the Tools menu, Mount disk, check the option for raw images and click Next. Select all the disks and click Open to upload the disks into the utility. Hetman RAID Recovery will use the images, as if they were physical disks, to rebuild the RAID automatically. When you select the volume, its information will be displayed below. Check if the program has built it correctly. If everything is correct, right-click on the volume and choose Open. After that, choose the scan type – file scan or full analysis. For most simple cases, file scan is enough and it takes less time. In my case, the program has coped with the task easily. It has rebuilt the RAID automatically from SAS drive images and found all the files which were stored on this disk array. It also displays deleted files which are marked with the red cross. Select all the items you want to recover and click the Recover button. Specify where to save the data. Choose the disk and folder. And click Recover again. When the recovery process is complete, you'll see all the files in the specified directory. If the program can't find the missing files after the file scan, then go for full analysis. To do it, return to the main menu Right-click on the volume and choose Analyze again. Full Analysis. Choose the file system type. You can uncheck the option for content aware analysis as it will make the process go faster. If you still can't find the necessary files, run full analysis again, but this time with the content aware option enabled. In some situations, the program may fail to rebuild the RAID automatically. It can happen when the service information on the disks is erased, so the program cannot identify parameters of the crashed RAID. For such situations, the program has the manual mode for rebuilding with RAID Constructor. If you know the array parameters, start RAID Constructor and try building the array manually. Start the constructor, choose Manual mode, Next. Specify the RAID type block, order, size, add the disks it used to include, and replace the missing disks with empty drives by clicking the plus button. You may have to specify the offset, which tells you where the beginning of the disk is located. One more thing is to choose the disk order. When you give all the parameters you know, you will see a RAID. And if all information is correct, you will see its folders here. Fill in all properties and click Add. It will appear in the Drug Manager immediately. Now start the scan.
search for files and recover the ones you need. So, today we have explored several ways of recovering data after a controller breakdown and what tools are required in certain cases. Data recovery from a RAID system after a Fujitsu D3116 controller breakdown can be a challenging task, but you'll be able to restore your files by following the steps described in this tutorial. Always remember the importance of backing up your files regularly. Keeping your backups on separate storage devices or in a cloud service will help you avoid data loss in case your RAID controller fails or other unpleasant things happen. If you are not sure you can handle it, it's always better to contact professionals. I hope that our advice and recommendations will come in handy in recovering data from a RAID system based on Fujitsu D3116 controller. If you have any questions or you'd like to share some data recovery techniques, you're welcome to post a comment below. And that is all for now. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and good luck!